Aptura's latest video didn't only inform us that its vehicle-mounted solar panels were in production, but also provided some insight into the process that led to this point. It wasn't simple, and it wasn't as simple as throwing some panels on the outside of the vehicle. In one of our latest Aptera videos, where we talked about Aptera outsourcing the production of its solar panels to Maxon, a company that specializes in solar panel production, we got some comments asking why Aptera decided to outsource this part of the manufacturing process to a company outside the US rather than doing it themselves. Hopefully by the end of this video, that too will be answered. Hi, this is Echo Electric where you'll be getting all the latest news, updates, and stories concerning Rivian, Aptera, and more. If you enjoy our content, support us by giving this video a like, and why not subscribe for more? Don't forget to hit the bell icon as well, so you'll be the first to know each time we release a new video. As stated at the beginning of the video, the company's Aptera works with first thought that the design for a solar car at least the way Aptera was attempting to achieve it, was just not feasible. If you really want a solar cell that can bend in two directions while remaining sturdy enough to endure the rigors of driving, there is no automotive provider where you can just purchase cells. The technology just did not exist. Why? Because it's a huge request. Bending a solar cell in one direction is difficult enough. Bending it in two directions would very certainly break or crack it. As a result, most vehicle-mounted solar cells have previously only been seen on relatively flat portions of cars, such as the roof, but it's far worse than merely not snapping the panels during manufacture. If there's too much stress on them to begin with, and they're on the brink of breaking, they probably wouldn't survive. You're talking about 20 years of heat, cold, vibrations, shocks, rain, hail, snow, blowing sand, people sitting or leaning on the vehicle, and the persistent onslaught of ultraviolet, infrared, and visible light. Solar cells receive just a tiny amount of visible light final and converted to energy, but that energy also seeks to break down and discolor whatever you put over the cells to protect them. It truly is a totally different game than you see with fixed solar or placing solar panels atop something like an RV or semi-truck. So, Aptera had to do lots and lots of testing. So it makes total sense that Aptera reached out to one of the only company capable of taking such risks in developing these specific types of solar panels that can bend two directions without breaking. In their facility, Aptera carried out lots of tests with instruments such as a little air gun, which they used to shoot prototype solar cells and panels with ice to simulate hail. They had all sorts of testing going on, some of which was hidden. Now the video lets us get a better peek of what was going on and a lot more information on some of the tests they carried out. Aptera had to do a two-axis design, both because the vehicle needed to be a specific shape for maximum aerodynamic efficiency, and because they needed to cover as much of the vehicle in solar as possible. Between these two things, they could develop a vehicle that could get meaningful range from the sun. But more importantly, they couldn't come up with a design that they could only make a handful of. They needed to devise a strategy and design that would allow them to produce a million copies rapidly enough to meet Aptera's demands, plus cover many, many more. So, how is this solar technology a game changer? And how does it matter aside from Aptera? It's understandable that a two-seater car with an unusual design is unlikely to disrupt a whole industry. But it doesn't have to do that, since even in niche sectors, there's a lot of money to be earned. Aptura also intends to produce other vehicles in the future, including those with larger wheels and more interior space and seating. Even so, the technological problem of squeezing enough miles per kilowatt hour of energy to gain meaningful range from the limited number of kilowatt hours of energy that solar cells can gather requires unconventional design choices, even in bigger cars. While it might be improved to get enough efficiency out of a larger vehicle, you'd need something similar to the Dimaxion to get enough efficiency out of a larger vehicle. But solar technology continues to advance just like battery technology. Today's solar cells on the mass market top out at around 24% efficiency, with 30% efficient cells coming in the near future.
That means there's a lot more energy that solar cells could capture in the future as the technology continues to improve. At 40% efficiency, which is something that's in development at the moment, the power you can get from a car's surface will double. If they can get as far as 90% efficiency, for example, a vehicle like the Aptera could add almost 120 miles of range on a good day. When solar cells improve, traditional automakers will want to put panels to their vehicles. The ability to add 40 to 50 miles to the range of a more conventional vehicle each day would be worth the extra expense of installing solar. They might provide even more variety with foldable designs. Companies would not be able to accomplish this if Aptura had not pioneered vehicle-mounted two-axis flexible solar panels. However, now that the difficult elements have been sorted out, tomorrow's more efficient panels will be easier to integrate into future cars. Outside of the automotive industry, solar technology is still in its infancy. It's been around for a while, but as it improved, it ended up on many rooftops and will soon be on vehicle roofs. However, we will begin to see solar technology appear in a variety of places. Earlier this year, an Australian team printed its own roll-up solar panel and drove it throughout the country to demonstrate how well it worked. Because of the thin layer and low cost, their concept is an excellent method to begin installing solar panels everywhere. However, the world may be a rough place. Because of the curvature of the surface and the climatic conditions, placing solar cells in some locations will be difficult, almost as challenging as putting them on a car. Having the technical know-how for installing solar cells in tough conditions on curved surfaces would open up a ton of new power-generating options. And that's why this move by Aptera won't just benefit Aptera alone, it's bigger than you think. So what do you think about the technological advancements taking place in the solar panel sector right now? What other products do you see these two-axis flexible solar panel technology used on? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this one coming in the future. See you later.